Come on up here, sister, if you're ready. Any, whoever else, if you want to come, sister, whoever else is helping us tonight. <clears throat> okay, okay. Thank you, mother. I should have. We are glad to be with you, Christian Life Assembly. And let's, everyone, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're here to worship God. Stay tuned. We've got a message coming up, and I believe it will encourage us tonight not to quit on Him, not to quit on Jesus. But right now, let's give Him worship. Praise the Lord. Well, we celebrate your victory. Hallelujah. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary to save a wretch like me, I heard about his groaning and of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saw touch tonight. Do it in this place, we pray. Oh, we cry for that touch of Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence to touch. in this house. Thank you, dear God, for your presence in this place. Oh, thank you, Lord. You didn't just stop when we got saved. You keep it going through a whole eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for that precious touch. Oh, thank you for it, Lord. May they on the internet feel that touch right where they are, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the joy that floods my soul. Oh, flood it, Lord. Flood this place. Something happened and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Can you just lift up the name of Jesus? Can you lift him up in worship? Oh, it's Jesus. Oh, it's his touch. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. We love you. Since we've met you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's real, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's real. Thank you, Jesus.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. No matter what, Lord, blessed be your name. We choose it tonight, dear God, to say blessed be your name. And we thank you that that touches us here. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, there's somebody that the touch they need right now i believe they're listening here that, that touch they need they're so far down they don't know where to go from yes. here but lord that touch is real for them dear god tonight and i pray for them dear god and i intercede that you make that touch real where they are dear god oh that you show yourself to be the the, the lover of their soul and their almighty god Lord, we just appreciate your presence tonight. Just appreciate to be here. Mm. Oh, Jesus. I feel that there's souls that need to be touched. And the, the person that you're talking about, his, his soul is empty and he needs to be, he needs filled. <laughs> It's real. This is real. If you're watching tonight, we know we can feel your emptiness. And we're here to help you fill that. We're here to help you fill that soul back up with your joy that you need. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Reach out. Yes. Limited to do it, you're not weak to do it. Yes. Fill his cup, Lord. Fill that. Father, I pray that no one listening believe in a little God tonight. Believe in the Almighty, yes. King of Kings and Lord of Lords, yes. the Savior of souls, you can touch you here, touch the lover you. when we never deserved it. May we reach out for that one. Yes. And anyone listening, reach out for him. Fill yourself out of the bottle. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The bottom of the bottle was empty. Thanks to God. We prayed for some big needs before we went on the air. Oh, but he, we believe in for these and believe in for whoever's up there too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that the chains will be broken, the bonds will be broken. Do it, Lord. Yes. Do it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are in all of you, God. We are in all of you. You move like a bridge. I rest in overflow. Come and rest this day. 
Fill our cups. Yes. Yes, Lord. yes Bring amen. peace to our souls. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a good God. And we celebrate him tonight. His presence is precious. Thank you so much, worship team. Were there any specials tonight, Brother Woody? Talk my way into it. Uh, I tried. Yeah, maybe next time. You know, it talks about, I was thinking there, that silence in heaven. You remember in Revelation for half an hour, just in awe of God and what he does. Just in awe of him. It's precious. And we pray the Lord is ministering to everyone watching out there. We'd love to hear from you. Love to hear what God's doing or what needs are there. He is able. We did want to share with us just briefly what's going on in the church. Um, we hope everyone that's able can watch or tune in on Sunday. We have a special speaker coming. His name is Marcus Hardison, and I don't want to put anybody on a pedestal, but I believe it will be a blessed time. So we encourage everybody to be, be with us on Sunday morning. And another awesome time is coming in the evening. We're having a special time we have not done here since I've been pastor, and it's, it's a foot washing service, and we're going to do that uh, in connection. That was connected with the um, Passover time right before Jesus went to the cross, this time of the year that we celebrate. And so we do have the foot washing uh, coming up for us, and we'll have a wonderful time of believing the Lord to really break every. The brother talked about breaking chains. We're believing for chains to be broken. We're believing. So um, we do encourage, uh, when, next Wednesday night, my brother will be sharing, Brother Gary, appreciate him, appreciate his message on Sunday. I will say this, I told them earlier, it was my, that for those that watched on the internet and the service cut out early on Sunday, that was on me. <laughs> I was digging around back there fixing something I couldn't fix, and so it, but I fixed the internet. Uh, but we praise the Lord, we hope that you got a blessing watching that, and it was an encouragement from Brother Gary on Sunday, and we look forward to next time. Uh, on Wednesday, and then we have our uh, Easter resurrection. That'll be that'll be a, a week and a half, and we'll have also our fun Sunday singing on the thirty first as well. So we'll have a great time on that Sunday, and then the discipleship coming up April fifth, the following Friday night. And so Brother Gary and Sister Ruth will host, and we will looking forward to hearing good things. Hebrews chapters eight through ten is a topic, so keep studying Hebrews; it will bless. All right. His word is a blessing when we dig into it, and there's so much wonderful to dig out of here, and so we want to look into that tonight with us in our time together. We finished a, a union on 1 Corinthians. I wanted to go a little different direction with us. 1 Corinthians had some great material for the church. I believe there's something else that the, that the Lord was speaking for our church in the book of Haggai. And so we're going to be in the book of Haggai tonight, and for the next 
a few times on Wednesday night that I'm sharing. It's not a long book, so we won't have a long series coming up for us, but we will be sharing from this book. And if you can't find it, it's three books before. If you find the Matthew in the New Testament, it's three books before. So you're right, right there at the end of the Old Testament, but there's a beautiful message here in this book. And I call this tonight, Don't Quit on Him. Don't quit on His way. Don't quit. All right. And so we're going to dig into the, to the book here and see what the Lord teaches us and shares with us from Haggai. So you're welcome to stand if you want to tonight. We're talking about not quitting. We don't want to quit. We don't want to give up. And this book tells us that his plan is going to take us great places. So I want to give us a little background here as we read this. And we're going to read the first four verses here in this book. Reading. Haggai 1.1, in the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, to Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, and now we move on to verse 2, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, the, this people says, the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Verse 3, then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? It's a good question. Let's, let's pray and dig in. Father God, we love you. And we thank you for your sweet presence here in this house. And we believe your presence is brought forth through your word. And we just pray that you sh share with everyone listening to this tonight from your word that we might break this bread. And you will fill our cups, dear God, to overflow and to take it to somebody that needs Jesus, we pray. In that name of all names, amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. When I was little, the one... Uh, the one that in my house was even littler than me at that time, if you can believe it now, was my brother Aaron. And so we always pretty much hung out together and we played games together. And usually because I was older, I was pretty inventive and I devised all the games that we played and I devised the rules. So you guess who usually did the best at the games we played? But you know what? I still did, wasn't going to win all the games because it just wouldn't happen. I was... I had enough to put, a, put together something to where Aaron could win sometimes. You know what I wanted to do when he did? Quit right there. Because uh, this isn't right. I'm supposed to win this game. And I couldn't, I couldn't keep going with it. Um, and we're tempted because in, in life, we're tempted to want to quit even when we understand that we a lot of times have made our own rules and we played with that attitude for me first. And so Lord, help us to see that when we do it his way and go his way, we should never quit because God has good things for us on the other side. And we'll talk about that. So Haggai, what is this book? This is not high on the books, so probably folks will, will know much about. But it's, it's got a precious message. So this is about 500 years before Jesus. About 520 B.C. is where we're talking about. Over a, about a four-month period, there are four separate prophecies in the book of Haggai that uh, he reveals to the folks. And the message here is God wants us, God wants his people to keep working on his work. He wants us to keep going. He's got a work for us to do. So let's talk just a little bit about that. So Israel, if you know the story of their history, their redemption, uh, they had so much given to them, but so many times they messed up, they blew it. And then, then this time that they've come to, they'd had a kingdom, and their kingdom had gone into exile. They were in exile for uh, a long time and now toward the end here we're toward the end of the old testament they've come back from exile and so they've come back home they, they led a group you can read about this a little bit more we'll t we're going to cover a little bit of it here in just a moment in the book of ezra ezra covers a lot of this same this same territory but they they were really um struggling to figure out what's important those priorities we talked a little bit about priorities and what's important last week in a church and our brother talked on Sunday about hanging in there like Rocky Rocky Balboa right we want to kind of merge a little bit of those two of them together here so they were they were had been blessed God had brought them home from exile 50,000 or so somehow had come back to to the holy land and the people had started to rebuild God's temple and there was an awesome time where folks came together. If you could put in that verse from Ezra 3.13, a 
from Brother Gary. Appreciate Brother Gary's help back there tonight. And so in Ezra, this is a well-known verse. I remember reading this, and it's, it's pretty awesome. So the, the, there was so much awesome praise going on because they laid the foundation of the temple. It's exciting. We're getting things back together where they need to be. And it says that people could not discern the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people, but the people shouted with a loud shout. Can everybody give a good amen to that? Amen. amen. And the sound was heard afar off. Hallelujah. We celebrate those precious times that the Lord gives us. But guess what? We, whenever there's, there's good that comes, we know who what else comes with that. There's opposition. There's opposition that comes. And if you read on in Ezra, the, the enemies of Israel discouraged them and they quit building the temple for several years, for over a decade. This, this great time they had, it was forgotten about. And they went into a period where they were pretty much had, had suffered opposition and they had quit doing God's work and instead were focusing on their own work and, and doing what they wanted to do. And so... Um, now we come to the story here where Haggai's in, and we're going to look at Ezra 5 and verse 1. So we have a, a dynamic duo that comes in here to, to minister. And so this guy, Haggai, and the following book in the Bible, Zechariah, they're a team. And this team comes in to minister to the people that have come back from exile. And it says this, of Ezra 5, 1, Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Edo, prophets, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, who was over them. So I'm thankful that when we have those times when we're down, God raises up people. He is good to do that for his people. He is good to raise up leaders. And I'm thankful too, sometimes that when the shouting and all the joy, it, it seems like it's gone, God's not gone. He's not gone and he's not done. And we, we understand and see that as we don't quit on his work and don't quit on keeping his priorities first, he's going to take us through this. And so church is hard sometimes. People in church, they do wrong, they do bad. Um, I, I, I told the story about this, this church. We had opposition starting this church here. Uh, just If you hadn't heard this story, just briefly, they didn't, the, the owners of the property had a stipulation on the deed, you're not supposed to put anything mobile here. Well, the Assemblies of God wanted to put a mobile chapel here. And they couldn't get permission from the owners to work on that deed. And they had to work them and work them. It's like it's never going to work. But guess what? It worked out because here we are. That mobile chapel was here. And they started building on that build. They said, if you get that building going, we'll go ahead and we'll let you be here. God opened the door for it to work. And my point is this. The opposition comes. Church is hard. It's hard. People, don't, people struggle with that. And people struggled at that time here with the church as, as to how to go forward. But God is... God is able. He is, he is good to bring us through those hard times. And I, I just want to say this. So many Christians today, they come to a place where, well, I, you know, that church over there, it's just giving me so much trouble. And I'm the temple of God anyway, so I really don't need to be in church. I really don't need to be anywhere near that. I can worship God just as good on my own. Church is just too hard. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We know sometimes we have that feeling, but I, I can, we cannot ignore little books like Haggai in here because it has a big, powerful message. The house of God needs to be taken care of. This house and this house, we need to take care of his house. We need to take care of his plan because we take care of everything else so often and we quit on him. Lord, help us. Lord, help us to put his plan first. What is his plan? Let's go over that for just a few moments with us tonight. So in verses 2 through 5 that we read, we need to think about the way that we're going. It says here uh, in verse 5, if you read, go on down through verse 5. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. I'm going to preach here just a second. I'm reminded in verse 5 that it call, he's called the Lord of hosts. And that, doesn't, that name doesn't always mean a whole lot to a Christian today, but when we say host, he's not like the host of guests. He is the God of angel hosts, in other words. You remember Jesus could call you know, the legions of angels to come immediately and help him when he was in need. We serve an almighty God, you all. We serve a powerful Lord of hosts. And so what I'm saying is, if he's got the ways, they're higher than our ways. 
they're better than our ways and we need to consider what we're doing and who we're following because so oftentimes we follow our own. You know, it's, it's not bad to work on your house or work on the things that you love to do. We all have our, our hobbies and our interests, and I hope your interest isn't too often collecting large amounts of junk like I have to do because then I have to de deal with you in my other job as the waste coordinator. But um, I, I'm just teasing. But, uh, you know, we all have our things that we do. The thing. Everybody has their thing, right? And a lot of times what ends up happening, though, is their thing ends up above the thing, God's thing, God's plan. And so we have to look at that. And sometimes the things are very good, very good. You know, it's relationships are important. Family is important. But you know what Jesus said? This came to me because we love our families. But Jesus said, you know, I got to take care of my family. I got to say goodbye to my family. And Jesus said to him, let them take care of that. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. So he, and my point is, we love our families, but he has to be first place above anything and anyone. And so, uh, you know, we have, we have our houses we work on, and we have our, it says they had them panel with wood. I, I can imagine somebody <laughs> going to town paneling a few houses in Jerusalem there. Um, but at the end of the day, we don't want what's good to stop us from what his will is and his best plan. And so I, I know I'm preaching here, but Lord, help us to let go of our excuses, to let go of the excuses that we have. Well, I, and I've heard, I'll, I'll say this here. I've heard all the excuses. I heard an excuse recently, the wind's blowing too hard. And this was before all this wind this week. You know, I, I have to, what I'm saying is I have to tell people, not just in this, but in my other job, I have to tell them to clean up their trash sometimes. And they say, well, the wind's blowing too hard. I had one that um, they were picking up litter for me. I had not pick up litter on the road, and it was a road here in Logan County, the north side of the county. And uh, they said a big dog was attacking. Well, apparently the big dog attacked them for about five miles because they didn't clean up any, hardly anything I needed them to on that stretch of road. My point is we, can all, we all can come up with excuses. Some of them are better than others, but all oh, the excuses are real sometimes, and they, they, they flow. And we all can rationalize in our head, but God says, consider, consider the excuses need to end. Amen. The excuses need to end because I have a good plan for you that you're shutting out with your, your, your excuses and your bad priorities. Verse six, verse six, let's, we'll keep going here. Brother Gary, I'll go ahead and read on down through verse eight. Uh, it says here. So people have missed their priorities, and this is what it ended up happening to them. You have so much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes in it. Verse 7, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. There it is again. There it is again for us. Consider. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. Go in. Oh, I tell you what, when he's glorified, he'll take care of everything else. You remember that verse? This is not my notes, but what does it say? Seek him first. Oh, and all that other. All that other he's got. Take pleasure in him and let him take pleasure in us and in what we do. And so, so oftentimes people neglect the things of God and they put their own things first. Prayer gets left behind. The, the, the work of God gets left behind. Church gets left behind. And people waste their energies and have nothing to show for it. One of the, I preached it before, but one of the worst things that I can feel, and maybe you, you're here with me, but one of the worst things is to do work and it not matter. To do work and it ends up, you ended up, you had to start it all over and do it all over again. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's one of the worst feelings you can have is I wasted hours, minutes, whatever it is. Days, sometimes we waste on nothing, nothing. Because it was, because there was nothing to show. And so oftentimes it was because we didn't give it to God. Our priorities ended up where they didn't need to be. And that's not always what it is, but there are that there's so often that's what ends up happening. And so what does it say here they need to do? They need to build God's house so that he could be honored and honor their ways. I know in my own testimony, I've shared some of it before, but I can, I can say this and in reference to this tonight, 
even as a young boy, the times in my life when I was furthest away from the house of God, and most of the time it was this house, it was this church, the times I was furthest away were the darkest times. They were the darkest times when I was in church less, I was doing less, even as a kid doing less for God, those were the darkest times that I remember. But I tell you what, God filled me up. He gave me a full blessing uh, when I did step up and uh, tried to do what I could. You may, We make mistakes. We do that. Sometimes we make mistakes. But if we step in and say, hey, I'm here for your work, Lord. I'm here to do what you call me to do and, and see you glorified. He will bless that. And it, it's a happy thing. It's a happy thing when, when God works in our work for him. And so I, I want to encourage us here. Uh, when we take care of his house, and yes, that means this, but yes, that means this too. When we take care of the assembly together of the saints, when that, that is a priority for us, God blesses that. Church, is, church ministry is important. Site, the ministry here on this site is important. What does Jesus say? Even a cup of cold water isn't forgotten if you do it for him. It's not forgotten, the ministry that you do. And also in the bigger picture in the study I had, you, you take it out to the relationship that we have with God because so oftentimes that relationship gets neglected. The priorities get messed up. And Lord, help us. That relationship is precious, and we don't want anything to come in between that. Oh, Lord, help us to consider our lives and not just live our lives. Consider what he, is what he says here. Let's build the church house and not just quit because there's opposition. Amen? Not just quit because we realize that the, uh, we're on the path we need to be on. The foundation's laid and there's some good times, but there's some things in the way. And, but we've got to keep going. We've got to keep going. And that's what I want to encourage us with today. If you, you know, the boxing analogy our brother used you know, you have to fight every round. Amen. You got to fight all the rounds. You can't give up because that's that's where a lot of times we, we get knocked out. And that's not what God has for us. That's not his plan. This is a this is wonderful. You can kind of you can celebrate in this book because so many times the prophets were not listened to in scripture. You can go if you read a lot of the prophecy in in um Jeremiah, for example, a lot of times the people were not listening at all. But guess what? We find verse 12. Oh, it's a joy when people obey. Verse 12. Verse 12 of this passage. Then Zerubbabel, he's the governor of the land, you may remember, son of Sheltiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. And the words that Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God, had sent him. And the people feared the presence of the Lord. Precious. They obeyed. This, this was a generation that actually stepped up. They said, we were wrong and we're going to fix it. We're going to make it right. God is looking for a generation to say that. He's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for people willing to say, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to obey you right now where I'm at today. He's looking for that. And so the people listened and they feared the Lord. How precious it is. One thing for us, again, this is not in the note. The, the message was given, and we, we understand sometimes the message is not received, and it doesn't mean the message isn't real. The message, Jeremiah was just as much a prophet as Haggai. We celebrate when it's like Haggai and they obey, but it doesn't mean the message isn't real. Lord, help us to give the message no matter what. Lord, help us, regardless of the results. But the results here are good. The people obey. And at my encouragement to us, sometimes we need to take things seriously. Amen? There needs to be a, a seriousness to us. So, so often, some people just don't take anything seriously. Some generations don't take anything seriously. But I, I encourage us today, when we take the Word of God seriously, and we do what it says, we're blessed. I, I hope that's, it's, it seems like a simple message, but Lord, help us to do it. But it's true. When we take it seriously and say this is real, because it is, we will be blessed. We will be blessed. Lord, help us to be reverent before him and have that reverence. Because when we have that obedience and hold on to what he says, we will, we will, we will see him work. We will see his house grow. We will see blessings come no matter where it is right now. Amen. God, God can take some pretty, you know, I, it says the temple here is in ruins, right? It's a pretty big mess. Even though they laid the beginning, it's a mess. God takes pretty big messes and makes good things out of them. So I want to say that if the mess is big right now, we don't have to worry about that. We need to worry about where our hearts are with obedience, and we'll see him work in the mess. 
So be encouraged. I, I, I've told this a little bit before, but I, I, I can expand on it. My parents aren't here tonight, and they, they may end up watching this. I don't know, but we'll, we'll talk about it anyway to expand on something that we've told. My dad has had ideas, and my, and, you know, my mom working with him to live about everywhere in Logan County. They tried to build places. Before I was born, after I was born, they tried to work and, and go about everywhere. It was like my dad had an idea to build houses. Uh, there's one right over by the high school, that subdivision. He tried to work in that, and they ended up, it, but, but every door was slammed in his face. You know, there's a subdivision right over there, right by the high school now, and there was no houses when my dad was trying to build there, and, and lo and behold, you know, it didn't work out. It just didn't work. And so my dad had kind of give, come to the point, I'm going to go back home to my, my ancestral home in Allen County, which is, if you don't know what that is, it's two counties over from here on the Tennessee state line. He wanted to go to Allen County and build a house there. There was my granddad's property, my, the property there, and it was a nice place. And so that had all been kind of in the works. Well, I was a little boy. I was about 10 when this happened, and it was right about right here in this church. And a man I've never seen before, and I don't think I've seen him since that weekend, I get a revival, whatever it was that time. He came and he prophesied a word. And he told my mom, and my, I believe my mom and dad were both here at that time. I'm somewhere off on the side. You know, I don't want to get too close because it is a little scary. If you haven't experienced, you know, prophecy that people, it's a little scary for, for some time. And so you, you stand off to the side, but you are kind of curious to hear what's going on, what's going to be said. And he said to them, I know you have a plan to leave here, but if you stay here, I will expand your boundaries. Yeah. And that was the word that was given. And I knew that was from God. I, excuse me. I knew what my parents wanted to do, and I knew there was no way he could know that. And I knew that was from God. And the reason I say that, and the reason I want to say that is they didn't want to, but they obeyed what that was said, that word that came from that, that brother that night. And I knew he wanted to leave because, you know, like I said, every door had been closed. Well, I remember we, we always prayed as a family before bed, and they said, we need to pray about this because there's a piece of, there's a piece, a piece of land that's come up open. And I believe that's where... God may have us to live, and I'd heard it before, you know, you heard, we're going to go here, we're going to do this, yeah, right. And so they prayed about it. Well, lo and behold, they sold the fellow, the farmer out there, sold them that land. He did. He was bigger. And I didn't want to leave that house where we lived, but they built a new house, and guess who had to go with them? And you know what? I had to eventually concede that house was bigger and expanded in every way beyond the old one. And... I have to say, I thank the Lord that he keeps his promises when we Amen. obey, when we obey. And I guess it just makes me emotional because I know that the Lord, he affects our destinies and our lives, and we have to stay obedient to him to hang on to what he's leading us toward. And so why did he, why did he say that? You know, in hindsight, you can look back. I, I really believe the Lord who had us here because he wants us wants to do something good in Logan County. I really believe there's something special he wants to do in Logan County and that he wants to do here. I believe there's something special that, that we, we get a privilege to be a part of. And I know for a lot of us, you know, we, we wonder how did we end up here in Logan County because many of us, you know, this is not where we, we originally were. But God has brought us here for just such a time as this. And as we're obedient to him, and as we, we listen to him and obey the words of the Lord, he makes a promise in verse 13. And we'll read that verse to us too. We want to consider, consider, consider what he's got for us. Because he says this, Then Haggai the Lord's messenger spoke the Lord's message to the people saying, I am with you, says the Lord. I am with you. Praise the Lord. When we step out, oh, he doesn't leave us to our own. He's always with us. And I thank the Lord he's been with my family. I thank the Lord he's been with my church. I've seen it. And I, and I believe for us, we will see it. He is the same God. He is the same God who is still with us. So consider his church. Consider his plan. And let's obey his plan and keep going. 
not quit. Because as we do, and, and we will see more things, more build. The building isn't done. The building we're going to see is going to be a good building that he's going to bring up. Just like Haggai and the people did. They, will see the, they saw the building and we will see it too. He is still here, y'all. It's time for God's house. It's time for God's house to step up. Amen. We'll call the brothers back up and we know what he can do. I believe many could testify like that too, how God has steered your destiny when you were when you stepped out in obedience to him. Many others could share similar stories. But I, I just want to say this. He's not done yet. We don't need to be either. We don't need to be either. Whoever's out there, you don't need to be done yet with what he's got. And I do want to say this for us. I do want to say this. There is, truly, there is a time to quit. Did you know that there is a time to quit? There's a time to quit on us and run to him. Does that make sense? There's a time to quit our own way and say, I'm done with this. And we run to his way. That's what this people did, and that's what we need to do. If there's anybody that needs to make it right with Jesus, if you were to die tonight or if he were to come back and you're not sure you're ready, this is the time to make it right. This is the time to turn to him and quit quit running from him. I want to pray for us, and I want to pray that the Lord is, it instills in us more and more that desire to say, I'm not going to quit on him. I'm going to hang on to him because he's with me. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that anyone that's, that's been kept going in their own way, they've hung on, but they've hung on to the thing they shouldn't have. The priorities that they have are wrong. And Lord, I just pray anyone listening that needs to see their priorities changed, they need to see that priority turn to you and your perfect will and not anything less. I just pray in the name of Jesus, you, share, you show them that through the Holy Spirit. If anybody is lost right now listening to this, if anybody needs Jesus, that they won't wait, but they will give up the old and run to the new, the new way you have for them, dear God. And, and in obedience to you, bend that knee. And Lord, they will come to you and say, Lord, I admit it. I need you, Jesus. I turn to you with all I have, and I will obey what you say. Whoever needs to receive that tonight, I pray for them in Jesus' name. And I pray also, dear God, for any of those that are tempted to quit. They've been in the race a long time, and they need to, they, they, they want to give up. I pray, dear God, that they not quit on you, Lord Jesus. They not quit on your absolute perfect will for their lives. That you're taking them someplace good. And that, Lord, any baggage that they've, they've come up with, any weight, oh, that they will lay that aside, dear God, and run the race. Run the race you've called for them to run, dear God. I pray in the name of Jesus that any of us that are praying for loved ones that are in that same place, that they're, they're quit or just about to quit. Oh, we pray. Oh, we cry out, dear God, that they have an, a, a, an encounter with the Holy Spirit, an encounter, dear God, with your people. They won't quit on your house. They won't quit on your plan. We believe for them and intercede for them in Jesus' name, for a miracle to happen, dear God. Because this is not a man thing, Lord. It has to be you. It has to be the Lord of hosts. It has to be the Almighty God. It has to be you. And we believe for it to be you, Lord God, and not any other. Do it, we pray, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you join them as they say? Bread of
We love to hear from you on the internet tonight. We'll stop our internet service here. He is real tonight, and he is able tonight. Don't quit on him. We love you so much. God bless you. We'll see you here.